Capital India Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Harmeet Desai from Philip Capital India Private Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Mr. Harmeesh? Yeah. Can we start? Yes. Uh, yeah. So, uh, thank you, Manav. Good afternoon and welcome to the Q3 and 9-month FI24 earnings call of Deepak Fertilizers and Petrochemicals Limited, hosted by Philip Capital. From the management, we have Mr. S.C. Mehta. Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Deepak Raskogi, President and Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Tarun Sina, President, Technical Ammonium Nitrate, Mr. Suparas Jain, Vice President, Corporate Finance, and Mr. Deepak Balwani, Head, Investor Relations. I'd like to thank the management for giving us the opportunity to host this call. We will begin the call with opening remarks from Mr. Mehta, followed by Mr. Deepak Raskogi for details on financial performance, Post, we'll have a Q&A session. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Is my voice clear? Yes, sir. Okay, good. So, a uh, good afternoon to all of you. I extend a uh, warm welcome to each of you for joining us in our Q3 nine-month FY24 earnings call of Deepak Fertilizers. Our earnings presentation and press release uh, have been uploaded in the company's uh, website as well as on the stock exchange, and I hope you have had a chance to review it. Now, as you would have uh, noticed from the figures, that we have faced yet again a very challenging quarter. However, let me take this opportunity to share what are macro and micro undercurrents that will help you to better understand the context as well as the figures, and also get a bit of a medium-term, long-term perspective as we see it. So the results are good or challenging based on what they are compared with. So last year was our historic unusual best. Hence, comparing with last year, the current quarter nine months do appear rather pale. However, when we took the average of last five years, same quarters, or last five years, nine months, we have noted that the contribution margins continue to be good. And this shows the resilience of our business. If I were to put aside, you know, the one-time subsidy hit on the fertilizer side, and also the one-time uh, ammonia plant stabilization cost, you know, during the stabilization period, then, in fact, our margins uh, profile are actually better. Uh, as far as the ammonia project goes, which, uh, as you all recall, was a large investment, it is now fully stabilized. We recently completed our guarantee test runs and the capacities and efficiencies have been now well proven. So in a nutshell, from a higher volatile zone of ammonia to all downstream, we have now moved to a lower volatile zone of gas to downstream with the ammonia plant coming in. And that is going to help all the three businesses uh, as we go forward. We are also broadly seeing that the global newer ammonia capacities, like at Madin, they are getting tied up with downstream fertilizer needs. And with all that put together, we expect the ammonia prices to stabilize. Now, in case of our TAN business, Technical Ammonium United business, which serves the mining sector, uh, we did uh, you know, face a big hit emerging out of the huge quantum of Russian fertilizer-grade ammonium nitrate dumped into India because of the sanctions on the Russian products in some other countries. Now, as we see, we are seeing that some demand revival of the fertilizer-grade ammonium nitrate 
for Russia's domestic demand itself, as well as uh, in Brazil, where earlier this year the pickup was almost half of the typical needs. Uh, also, the as what we had uh, envisaged in the last call that the government has now opened up the ban on exports of tan by some 30,000 tons, and we expect the complete removal of the ban in the near future as a good policy, and that will allow us to export our top grade tan, which will you know uh, help uh, going forward. Uh, the government is also being sensitized to non-level playing and safety security concerns, which are there for the imported fertilizer grade AN, and which may result into some non-tariff barriers and controls for the imported Afghan. Lastly, as you would have read uh, more recently, uh, Coal India's aggressive plans to supply domestic coal is targeted to completely replace all the imported coal coming to India. This Atmanirbhar drive is likely to boost tan demand, technical ammonium nitrate demand, to probably double-digit Kagar, a positive for our Gopalpur project. Now, as regards industrial chemicals, <coughs> Uh, we have seen some global slowdown overall emerging out of, you know, the increasing interest rates and aggressive supplies last year at higher prices. As we speak now, we see the upward interest rate regime slowing down, which you are all uh, reading about in the U.S. and elsewhere, and a fair degree of destocking that has happened, which we are now uh, seeing that gradually we should shift back to normal prices. Finally, as far as the fertilizer business goes, uh, just to explain the context, uh, Government of India had come up with the nutrient-based subsidy scheme some 10 years back. What it simply meant was there would be fixed subsidies and free MRPs. So they would allow us to price our products, fertilizer products, freely. However, in the last few years with the global prices of fertilizer shooting up, the government clamped down upon free pricing. And as regards fixed subsidies, as per the formula, they are based on previous six months average. Now, in case of rising global prices, the industry would suffer losses on its inventory because the fixed subsidies would be covering based on the previous six months. Uh, in light of this, the industry had been pleading to the government to restore the old nutrient-based subsidy scheme uh, with free MRPs. But worries of a farmer vote bank, the government was worried about any exploitative pricing. Now I might share that a very good middle path uh, was announced by Department of Fertilizer just uh, seven, ten days back which, uh, you know, came up in terms of uh, guidelines for reasonability of margins. So up to what margin the industry can make and beyond which it would be uh, something that, uh, you know, would be exploitative and we would need to give it back. So these margins are allowing us a decent headroom and uh, definitely better margins than what we are looking at today. And these margins, uh, the margin guidelines are also somewhere giving us headroom for innovations. So this uh, policy and this clarity is something that, uh, you know, the industry was looking forward to, and it will be a very positive uh, dimension to look at the fertilizer sector going forward. Our innovative uh, crop-specific uh, crop tech product has been gaining very good traction. And uh, if I summarize, at the fundamentals, our committed strategy of moving from commodity to holistic solutions for the crop nutrition business, for the technical ammonia united mining business, as well as the industrial chemicals where we are looking at specialty grades, 
uh, that strategy we feel is uh, validated again and again even during tough times and that is uh, something that we are looking forward to further building upon and our recently approved uh, restructuring will get a more focused uh, i would say drive on each of our businesses so with these uh, broad perspectives i will hand you over to mr deepak rastogi our cfo to take you through more details and then of course be available for any clarifications for any of your questions thank you yeah deepak thank you mr mehta um, am i audible and clear yes sir okay good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and i thank you for joining deepak fertilizers and petrochemical corporation limited conference call to discuss the q3 financial year 24 results during quarter 3 we reported total operating revenue of rupees 1853 crores with an operating ebitda of rupees 282 crores our operating margins grew by approximately 343 basis points quarter on quarter to 15.2% the net profit for the quarter is 61 crores with a margin of 3.3% similarly for the 9 months which is ytd december for this financial year we reported total operating revenue of 6590 crores with an operating ebitda of 849 crores nine months revenue and operating ebitda have shown consistent increase over the previous five years except for last financial year which we know that you know it was a positive aberration the operating ebitda margin is 12.9% and without the one time impact which actually we took in h1 the same will be 18.3% the one time impact includes subsidy impact of 267 crores and 87 crores on account of ammonia business stabilization during the first half of financial year coming to the performance of our business segment for chemical business chemical segment margins that improved to 24% in the quarter 3 versus 21% in quarter 2 the capacity utilization of our acids and uh, you know ammonium nitrate business was closer to almost 89 90% similarly the cap capacity utilization for 9 months uh, was around 90 90 to 92 well position to navigate through challenges and capitalize on the growth opportunities with this i would like to open the floor moderator thank you thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touch tone phone please note if you wish to re- you remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use only handset while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles We have a first question from the line of Jainam Ghilani from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Hi sir, thanks a lot for this opportunity. So we had a few questions. Uh, so what is the current spread for ammonia, and and when do we expect it to run at like optimum utilization? Mr. Jainam, sorry to interrupt, but you are sounding very distant. Can you please come Hello. Through? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so I wanted to know what is the current spread for ammonia uh, for uh, the imported ammonia versus our production, 
and uh, when do we expect it to run at full utilization you know uh, maybe you know i'm not clear on your first question you are you asking that what is the ammonia pricing fob middle east uh, us dollar which is closer to around 400 and, and it ranges you know which one but you know uh, last quarter it was closer to uh, almost 475 480 dollars on an average uh, as far as your second question is concerned uh, we are actually running uh, the plant at full capacity now. So, so how much sequential improvement can we expect in this quarter or the upcoming quarters? Uh, uh, I'm not clear about the question. Are you asking that uh, is that on the margin side? In terms of the uh, spread sir, for us, for the ammonium uh, spread, how do we expect it to, like, what would be the spread for us uh, in the upcoming quarters? Do we expect so, it to improve or should it be stable? So, effectively, what we are expecting is that it should be more or less stable or maybe slightly uh, coming down because it depends upon how the ammonia prices, uh, you know, globally actually are going to behave. So, we expect, you know, the the ammonia prices would at least be either stable or, uh, you know, coming down a little bit is what our understanding is, but we will have to really see how it will actually happen. So for the time being, you can think it will be stable to a slightly marginal level. Mm -hmm. And so in the fertilizer, uh, the Department of Fertilizer policy that has been uh, given by the government, so, where will we be standing? Will we be considered a manufacturer or an integrated player? We would be actually um, uh, considered as manufacturer. So, I guess the cap for us would be 10% PVT margins. That is correct. Yeah. And how would that impact our profitability? I don't think so that it is going to impact our profitability because the reasonable, you know, we basically, uh, you know, it is within our uh, overall limits that we can actually improve our profitability until that up, you know 10 percent so you know the profitability can go up you know so we have a uh, room uh, to be able to actually improve our profitability going forward and so as you mentioned that uh, the uh, ban of tan exports has been lifted so when do we expect the first shipment from us for exports yeah, so I will ask my colleague, Mr. Tarun Sina, to respond to this, please. Yeah, thanks, Deepak. Uh, moderator, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay, so uh, thanks for the question. Uh, right now, we are just waiting for uh, our export license, you know, from the statutory bodies. Uh, and it has taken a little bit of time because of the corporate restructuring that Mr. Mehta talked about when we you know, where we had actually uh, first changed, you know, the name of the company from Smart Chem to Mahadan, under which the TAN business came. And then, uh, you know, through a recent uh, demerger process, we are demerging the TAN business from Mahadan to Deepak Mining Solutions Limited. So as a result of these main changes, you know, we are just awaiting some licenses from statutory bodies. And with that, we expect in, if not by March, then certainly by start of April, our exposure should commence. Okay. Okay. And so last question. So as you had mentioned that the chemical business was impacted by imports, so can you please help us? What was the total imports for our products and how is the situation in the month of January? So are you basically looking at for the tan products are you looking at? Yes, tan. Okay. Yeah, over to you, Tarun. Sorry, I, I probably thought this question was about chemicals or was it about the import of ammonium nitrate? Can you please come back with your question? Yes, yes. Uh, import of the ammonium nitrate. Okay, so what's your specific question around that? So we, we were mentioning that uh, we were impacted by imports. 
So, uh, is there any figure that what was the total imports for the products during the last quarter, and you know how is the month uh, like how is the situation in January? Have the imports reduced or so? Yeah, so I'll just give you some pointers uh, to to get some picture around it. So, last financial year, which was financial year, you know, ending 31st March 2023. the total quantum of imports were uh, 3 lakh 55 56000 mm-hmm. of that order okay and in the first 10 months of this financial year which is in the january it has been around 3 lakh 73 3 lakh 74000 odd tons you know so that's the kind of so so the imports are higher this year but having said that the demand of ammonium nitrate in india is also growing Uh, so 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 a part of that growth is being taken by imports naturally and while the domestic capacity is uh, trying to service the rest of the demand of the country okay that's it from my side thank you sir and all the best thank you sir ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference please limit your questions to two per participants should you have a follow up questions we request you to rejoin the queue we have a next question from the line of deepak podar from sapphire capital please go ahead am i audible sir Yes, sir. You are audible. Please go ahead yes, with your question. Thank you uh, very much, uh, sir, for the opportunity. So, first up, just wanted to uh, understand, and I mean, couple of impact that you mentioned about uh, the Russian imports, as well as uh, uh, the Chinese import, right? Uh, 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 impacting the tan and nitric acid, respectively, uh, the sales. So, so I mean, uh, how much time do you think that uh, the, the, it will take from now uh, for situation to normalize, as we speak now? I mean, we are, are we are we one quarter two quarter away from things getting normalized um and and plus the export impact also uh, and benefit will also come so yeah so, so some some light on that would be helpful sir so you know obviously it's uh, difficult to basically pinpoint any specific timelines for it but i'll give you an answer in um, you know very specific parts for our industrial chemicals which is nitric acid and obviously for tan <coughs> ammonium nitrate as far as the uh you know industrial chemical which is nitric acid is concerned given that you know uh, the destocking has already happened and obviously we are expecting that the interest rates are you know obviously fed has already said that you know the interest rates are going to eventually increase hence there should be an uptick of volumes and obviously the reduction in imports you know overall is what we are expecting over a couple of quarters now whether it will happen in one quarter or two or three quarters it is difficult for us to obviously comment but uh, but it is in near term obviously you know the things are getting stabilized now okay uh, you know and but uh, obviously so the this stability will continue and you know it will eventually up sorry improve uh but we will have to really wait and watch how and when is the situation improves as far as ammonium nitrate is concerned as uh, mr tarun sinha was mentioning that we have actually seen the imports actually coming in russia from russia because of that they are actually exporting close to 1.5 million metric tons of afghan to brazil uh in the past but in this year specifically they have only exported around 1.1 1.2 million tons you know to brazil and it was because of officially you know the lack of demand in that uh, market and all that product which was to be going to brazil has actually made into india so um so obviously the things again on ammonium nitrate are stabilizing now and obviously you know this could be one time event it could repeat but we will have to really see and the other thing which uh, you know i would also place on record is that you know generally there is always an imports you know closer to 350 uh 1000 metric tons which would continue which doesn't impact our growth and things like that because the domestic market is also improving 
so you know for ammonium nitrate also we are seeing a stabilizing signs obviously q3 have been one of the top quarters you know across both these businesses uh, but we have seen a lot of signs of stabilization and hence we think that you know the improvement would obviously start coming in it's only a matter of time you know whether it will take one quarter or a couple of quarters uh, you know we we'll have to really wait and watch how the situation goes mm-hmm. sir and i i got it that that's quite helpful sir and and my second question revolves around your ammonia uh, at current currently it is at 475 80 dollars per uh, ton uh, the ammonia fo middle east fob price uh, because that was you mentioned about was for the last quarter so currently obviously you know it keeps changing you know currently it is hovering around 400 and uh, you know 25 to 400 so that is the range you know uh, you know especially in january 425 to 440 yeah that is right so you know it but you know what happens is that you know on an average you have to see how the whole month actually drives it so the so the ammonia prices ammonia prices fob me has actually been uh, you know variating uh, quite a bit and uh, uh, we think you know it would actually stabilize uh, you know uh, over a period of time but i would say generally the range of ammonia is closer to 450 to 475 so it should have stabilized uh, you know in that range understand and what would be our spread at at, at this 425 to 450 dollars per ton uh, in, including the benefit uh, uh, we get from the government yeah we had been basically talking about a spread between you know 75 to 125 dollars depending upon how you know how the actual variation is but you know at uh, 450 dollars generally we talk about uh, a spread of close to maybe around 75 to 100 dollars you know okay and that includes the government benefit right of 75 dollars that we get uh, that will be that will be slightly over and above that, yeah. oh, over and above that. yeah okay uh, that's it from my side sir thank you so much all the very best thank you sir we have a next question from the line of aditya sen from robo capital please go ahead hi thank you for the opportunity uh, so with the capacity addition in tan and uh, given that we will start exporting in uh, in the coming quarter how much volume addition do we aspire in the uh, coming year that is fy25 so you know we basically are currently at 486000 metric tons you know we basically are looking for 100000 tons worth of capacity expansion going forward in next year which will take us to around 587000 metric tons with kopalpur coming in sometimes in 26 27 uh, you know that would actually add up additionally 376 so give or take by uh, you know in couple of years we will be close to a million uh, you know um, uh, metric tons of capacity right and this 100 thousand tons in next year is expected to come by which quarter quarter to so 50000 tons is already in place you know 50000 yes. tons is under uh, you know obviously planning mode so it will come in you know next early next uh, you know next year for example all right and uh, with the ammonia capex uh, how much roughly how much percentage increase in ebitda do we expect what is your question again so uh, my question basically is because uh, ammonia capex is sort of a backward integration capex uh, ultimately uh, we we believe that uh, the objective is to cut down the volatility on the ammonia prices so do we expect any increase in gross margins or any beta with uh, the addition of such capex yeah the answer is yes otherwise you know there will be no roi so effectively there will be an increase but you know it also depends upon how the ammonia prices in the uh, global markets are doing it, effectively uh, but you know just to give you an answer you know overall you know we have been looking at a payback period of around 6 to 7 years for the project and hence uh, you know accordingly the 
numbers, you know, and we think we would be able to basically, uh, you know, be delivering uh, those numbers over. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We have a next question from the line of Mr. Ranjit from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, hi, gentlemen. Thanks for taking my question. The first question is on. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Ranjit. Can you please come closer to the device? Okay, is it better? Oh, yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. So I will ask you that uh, uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity. You know, first question is on the PCL uh, performance chemicals. Uh, can you share a, a rough uh, financials whether you would be able to break even at the EBITDA level for this quarter? And second, uh, you have also mentioned that we are looking forward to getting the government uh, incentives, the state uh, government incentives. Uh, how do we account that? Uh, would it be pointed up in the procure as and when we would receive that? So that's the first question I had. Sorry, uh, Ranjit, uh, so that I understand, are you saying that will we be uh, rate even at EBITDA level this year, or means coming quarter is what your question is? Yeah, for PCL. Yeah, okay. So the answer, uh, obviously we'll have to do some maths, but you know, the answer could be yes. Uh, but we'll have to really see how the overall thing stands out in terms of, uh, you know, external FOB uh, ammonia, you know, obviously rising because it's all the revenues of PCL determine, are determined on the, uh, obviously how the, uh, you know, it is marked uh, with the market pricing. So that is number one. As far as the other uh, question which you had was, uh, how do we account for the incentives? Is what your question is? The state incentives. Yes. So these numbers, these numbers, if I were to basically, uh, you know, obviously start adding incentives because these numbers are without incentives, then definitely we will be a bit of positive. Uh, but you know, we have, we are actually um, currently in a process of filing the details for the eligibility certificate and once we have got those things we should be able to account for it now uh, we will have to we are working on the timelines as to when we will be able to get those from the regulate you know from i might actually it is uh, the district uh, the ic which is uh, district industries uh, commission so we will have to really see when we get it but the idea would be that if we can get that eligibility certificate during this year then we should be able to account for as well during this. Uh, just one extension, uh, whether the 2Q or 3Q water production that we have done, we would be eligible for that or it would be only be implemented from the date of uh, eligibility certificate that we get? No, it is from the, from the, from the start of the production. Yeah, good, that's helpful. Uh, the second, uh, what is the average gas uh, costing now since we have already almost entirely tied up? Uh, so if you can help with the average gas costing, that would be helpful. So it is around, you know, it is uh, somewhere around, you know, um, uh, closer to around 13.5, uh, you know, dollars in the BQ. Yeah. Uh, thank you. And final bit of uh, the FOB price that you have shared, uh, what will be the landed cost of ammonia? So you can actually, uh, when you talk about FOB, MAE, you are talking about. Uh, so your voice uh, was not clear. Uh, 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 am I audible now? Yeah. Your question is that uh, FOB, MO, ME pricing, how much dollars we have to add? to be able to basically get to the landed cost, right? Right. So, you know, closer to around, you know, 100, 110 dollars. Sure. Because, you know, just at the landing, it is 100 dollars, then you have to add customs and all, which will add maybe around 15 dollars more. So that is the reason I said, you know, it's around 100, 115 dollars. Right. And finally, any update on the nitric acid project that uh, we have done? What are the timelines we are looking at for the commissioning? So we are looking for the second half of 26. If I 26. Yeah. And what is the capex that we are incurred till now out of 1900 crores? So, you know, we have just started it. So it is actually currently because we are into more uh, procurements, 
right now so you know it's more of uh, you know placing the orders and uh, providing the lcs wherever it is required because lot of assets are long lead items but if just if from a cash perspective you know we have hardly incurred 20 30 crores you know so far sure thank you sir thank you sir ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference please limit your questions to two per participant should you have a follow up question we request you to rejoin the queue we have a next question from the line of mr ankit from kota please go ahead hello sir so uh, can you please uh, let us know the, the net debt number for the uh, for december 23 hello am i audible hello oh uh, yes sir yeah just yeah, yeah just hold on please so it will be closer to around uh, you know um, 4000 closer to that number okay. this, this is net debt right sorry this will be around uh, yes yes that is correct you know it's it's an annualized number that's the way we are looking at annualized as an annualized for fy24 hello yeah that is correct yes okay and what is the status on gopalpur project so currently it is just to answer you you know currently we are at around you know around 3400 crores you know as a net debt effectively i just okay. to give you a thing. yeah okay yes tell me yeah, on my second question what is the status on gopalpur project so that progress the project is progressing well now and the timelines are for second half of 26 okay thank you thanks a lot thank you sir we will have a next question from the line of sharan nandi kohren for from investor please go ahead yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, i would like to know uh, the uh, de uh, merger status and by when both the entities will be listing separately in the stock exchange so you know we have got the order uh, you know uh, on actually they they have pronounced the order on 17th of january the uh, d uh, merger uh, has been approved we have to yet to receive the order so it will take a while maybe a month or so to basically put that process in place uh, the second question on the ipo side is what you are saying you know we will have to basically run these companies and whenever the board actually approves the listing process then we will come back and then accordingly plan and then inform everyone what what's the timeline do you have any timeline like in next two quarters this will happen like a share allocation of share ratio for the existing shareholder and when the both entities will be listed separately so the currently board has not taken any view on that so there is no timeline as such which i can provide you and the second question is uh, about the non core asset uh, the real estate uh, i think from last more than one year we have been discussing in all the calls and uh, currently uh, the company is going through tough times with respect to imports and other pricings uh, is there any plan on that uh, uh, selling the non core asset to liquidate and uh, make the balance sheet stronger so there is always a plan obviously for liquidation only thing is the board has not taken a final view and uh, whenever obviously you know we get the best pricing so the board will take a call and then accordingly we'll do it but we are aware of this and we want to do it uh, you know no sooner than later okay and quick question on what's uh, our uh, production cost of ammonia uh, the currently market price is 450 what you said what's our production cost so you can basically you know it's closer to sorry uh, i'm not able to hear 
So you know the production obviously we don't divide you know you we don't you know provide those numbers but you know net and net you know we always say the margins which we basically or the uh, uh, you know spread we have depending upon how the uh, you know the ammonia prices is the spread ranges from you know fifty dollar you know seventy five dollars to hundred twenty five dollars. Okay, yeah. I have one request actually. Uh, can uh, can we get an update on whenever there is a increase in the export, uh, like export ban was there and it is lifted now from twenty thousand to thirty thousand and any further? Because all these updates we will not get to know until the con call. In between the quarter, whenever such things happens, if we get an update on these things, it will be helpful. So we will look at that. And also the export uh, licensing that is also pending from last one quarter. Mr. Tarun mentioned in the last phone call as well that it is pending, and even today it's pending. Whenever that happens, if we get update on such things, these these are major events in terms of export ban, export lifting, and getting the approval, all these things. Yeah, uh, that's a request. Thanks for your time. All the best. Sure. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Mr. Neeraj, our shareholder. Please go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to know uh, what is the status on uh, uh, putting anti-dumping duty again? And last con call, I gathered that uh, uh, the matter is subjudice. So, any update on that front? It's specific to tan business. Yeah, um, uh, Tarun, can you take this, please? Yeah, absolutely. So the answer is still the same. As you know, in India, when the matter is sub judice, uh, we would be lucky to have a decision in in a quarter. You know, which is the time gap between two consecutive con calls like this. So the matter is still sub judice. Uh, that said, uh, uh, it, it appears that now the Ministry of Finance, which earlier had been uh, rejecting unilaterally without assigning any reasons to a number of uh, ADD, you know, recommendations. From the DGTR, which is the Directorate General of Trade Remedies, you know, under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, and this is not just for ammonium nitrate, for many products in different industries. Now, I think uh, the message we are getting is uh, uh, that stand of Ministry of Finance is changing slowly, slowly. So we'll just see what happens, you know. And as I said, it's hard to put a date or timeline to a matter which is in the court. So, if that stand is changing, are we expecting that uh, something positive can happen in terms of again putting this anti-dumping duty? Any such feedback or feelers you have from the government side? At this stage, no. Uh, it is just a very recent, you know, you know, information we received that uh, now probably things are, are lo looking for better. So not sure whether it is for ammonium nitrate or it is for which product. But uh, but certainly there is a bit of a change, you know, in what we feel. Now, if we are talking of the pending matter, which is matter pending in the court, uh, now that probably will continue to be in court, and we will have to wait till the decision comes out. If it comes to a stage that uh, you know there is a case for putting in a, a new ADD request then it will follow the entire process as it does, which is starting from the regional of trade and remedies. And then if they feel, you know, there's enough justification for a fresh anti-dumping duty, then they may, you know, develop a case, put up the case to Ministry of Finance again, and then we will have to see what happens then. So, so we are expecting any such development? If there is a case, we will. So so I think our chairman mentioned in the, in the in, in, initial part of this call that we have sensitized the different government bodies in terms of uh, the need to create a level playing field uh, for the Indian producers. And there are ways to do that through tariff barriers to non-tariff barriers. So all those measures are being looked at. And we will throw the line depending on how the government and the various ministries uh, guide us on this process. 
Oh, okay, right. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Tarun Dingra, a shareholder in the company. Please go ahead. Mr. Tarun, are you there? Mr. Tarun, are you there? As we are unable to hear from Mr. Tarun, we will move on to the next question. From the line of Kushal Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, thanks a lot. So, uh, my questions are on the lines of uh, uh, the mining solutions business that we have. Uh, and uh, my first question is uh, about the nature of contracts that we have with our customer. What are the inputs we, we provide to our customers? As in, do we provide some kind of uh, promise that uh, we will produce X tons of, uh, of the material? And what kind of uh, uh, return do we get like do we get the percentage of amount we save for them, save for them second question is uh, since we have no experience in downstream uh, like do we do have experience producing them but we do not have experience in mining so what kind of prototyping have we done in this uh, uh, this area and what kind of customer reviews we have got till now yeah tarun uh, if you can take it please yeah, absolutely. Thanks. So that's a great question because it is uh, aligned to, again, one of the comments uh, our chairman made right in the beginning of the call, which is uh, our transformation strategy for all our businesses from, uh, you know, just selling products to solutions. And uh, in the technical ammonium nitrate, which is now going to become a mining solutions company anyway, going forward through the corporate restructuring, this is the buzzword. So what we do, I'll, I'll try to keep it simple. The details can be quite lengthy. What we do with, with the mining companies and the mine operators is that, see, effectively, there are five value streams in a typical mine. And they are starting from drilling, which is drilling holes in the rock, then blasting, which is putting the right type of explosives in the right quantities in those holes in the rock. So that's blasting. After the rock is blasted, the third value stream is lifting that rock, excavating that broken rock, so excavation. And then that excavated rock is, is moved from where it was blasted to the place of processing or, or further treatment. So that's transportation, the fourth one. And the fifth one is crushing, if applicable. So drilling, blasting, excavation, transport, and crushing. If we combine these five you know, operations in a typical mine or an infrastructure project, then uh, this is what we call as the total cost of ownership of the mine operator or the quarry operator or the project operator. So what we do in the form of mining solutions business is we, we reach out to the mines and, and the infrastructure projects, try to do a baselining work in terms of mapping the baseline cost for each of these five value streams that I talked about, which is that is drilling to crushing figure out you know where are the scope of improvements in terms of the delta through introduction of uh, the right products and the right technologies which we are in the process of developing and that's the part of downstream the term that we used in your question and then we deploy a team of people which is another area where we are building capability and then we actually offer you know put an offer on the table for for the mine operator saying oh, look look this is what we feel it is in terms of the current cost structure and these are the, let's say, two out of the five value streams or, or four of the five value streams, depending on the case, where we think we can bring a delta improvement. And uh, as a result of we being able to bring that delta improvement, and if we are able to bring that delta improvement, we would like to share some of the benefit with you. So in other words, the model that, that the mining solutions business of Deepak is putting in the market is, we provide inputs to the mines in the form of uh, products, services, and solutions, which includes technology, and get paid for that. And at the same time, we guarantee certain outcomes as a result of the inputs that we provide. And those outcomes are agreed in the form of certain KPIs in our contract. And then we try to go for benefit sharing once we deliver those outcomes. So it's a two-way two you know, income stream, input and outcome-based. Uh, that's the kind of model uh, which we are working on, and we will continue to develop as we go along. Oh, sorry to interrupt you. Is it a one-time contract, or is it a long-running contract for multiple years? 
uh, so initially, you know, we were doing shorter term contracts, let's say six months kind of thing, because this is a new concept, a novel concept in India. No company in India is doing it actually. So we, and therefore the consumers also wanted to see, you know, how does it actually work from their perspective. Now that, you know, we have done a number of these and uh, now the success is there and, and, the, and the consumers can see it. We are now targeting long, slightly longer term contracts. When I say longer term, we will be looking at anywhere between one to two year kind of contracts to begin with. And again, as we get more matured, if the industry gets more matured, the consumers start to see even more value out of this. Potentially, in the longer term, we can go for even longer term contracts. Uh, so, unanswered part of my uh, question is what kind of prototyping have we done and what kind of customer reviews have been till now? And uh, what, uh, what roadmap do we expect? How long do we expect uh, uh, till we go to full scale? So, so the short answer is the entire country is the is the canvas that we can uh, we can attack with this model because nobody in India is doing it. When I say entire country, one level down detail is, you know, all the mines in India and all the infrastructure projects in India, and there are thousands of them, as we know. So it's a huge canvas to cover. Uh, but then the point is not every consumer is, is at the same level in terms of how they look at productivity improvement. So we are very conscious in terms of uh, approaching those consumers first who actually understand this language that we are trying to develop. And then we start to engage with them and, and uh, the results have been quite good. In saying so, we, we basically approach the entire market in three segments. One is what we call as coal segment, which is a very big segment in India. So coal mines, that's coal segment for us. Uh, then the, the non-coal mining segment, which is all other minerals other than coal and limestone all put together because they have different ways of you know running their mines. Their nuances are different. Their requirements are different. Mindset is different. And then the third segment, which we approached for this solutioning model is the infrastructure segment, which is completely different from mining anyway. So these are the sort of customers, and we have actually covered all three types of customers uh, in the past uh, 12 to 18 months with this novel idea and this novel business model. And I, as I said, it's picking up traction as we go along. Uh, thanks. Uh, if you can just mention some kind of reviews we have got, uh, thanks for the answer. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today, and I now hand the conference over to Mr. Deepak Rastogi, sir, for closing comments. Deepak, sir. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. For any further queries or clarifications, please do get in touch with our investor relations team. Thank you. On behalf of Philip Capital India Private Limited that concludes this conference, thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.